All right, so back to the workbench uh, for a request of people have been asking me uh, to switch out the motor here on camera for you guys to see. In yesterday's video uh, where I had this truck, uh, which is basically a, a mega monster mud truck, you know, uh, I had it pulling the Cormier trailer, which is the red trailer, pulling my Traxxas Spartan speedboat through mud, slush, and a whole bunch of water because we're having a warm spell here uh, just mid-January, which I took opportunity of and went straight out to uh, mess around. And I wanted to really do kind of a power pull, but I already knew that I was taking a risk. Uh, and the reason I know that is because my son was, uh, you know, pretending he was pushing my truck around and I picked it up the other day it hadn't been running then I could actually smell the motor just from it sitting there so it was already showing signs of wear from all the abuse I've put this truck through over the years and so yesterday we had a great smoke show at the end of the video uh, you know mega monster mud truck uh, blows motor while pulling speedboat was the video if you want I'll put a link in the video description box down below and really you know, it was facing forward and we had smoke just billowing out of this either side. And, and so I kind of knew that was going to happen, so I didn't mind pushing it to its limits. And uh, I knew that would be an opportunity just to actually do an upgrade. Now, I just brought this in from outside, uh, had it washed up yesterday, so I've got a little bit of condensation on the motors here uh, just because it's warm inside and, of course, cold outside. Uh, we can dry that up simply with a paper towel and uh, basically get straight into swapping these motors out. Now somebody actually thought that I was running dual DeWalt motors in here and of course not at all. It's always Tekken that I run uh, simply because I've been working with Tekken for years and years and I love their products. They've been with us since uh, RC Adventures started. So there's multiple types of motors that you can run in here. I always go with a 35 turn. Actually they've come out with a new 30 turn as well. I'd like to put those in here but I don't have any with me at the moment but this motor down here basically smoked out now I do run it I know there's lots of people that know how the beast runs but there's lots of people that are new to the show and don't know that I run dual motors now you can see some of the soot and some of the the heat that was getting transferred of course when this is smoking it's leaving soot all over everything um, no fire of course that's not a big deal we didn't have any kind of fire um, and you know having a a steel drive line and a steel transmission and dual motors I'm pushing out so much torque plus dragging that trailer with the little tiny tires on it with all that mud was just like dragging an anchor so basically with dual motors I'm not looking for speed I'm looking for exceptional pull power right the power that these two can transfer to the drive lines is ample compared to just having one now what am I going to do today? Basically, I'm just going to be undoing the uh, the motors right here. I'll probably just go ahead and will I undo the bottom just to make it easy? I guess I can just remove it with these four screws that are down here. We'll remove the transmission and I might as well get started. For those that haven't seen, uh, I do run the RX-8, which is an 8-scale monster truck, ESC. I did waterproof it. I took it out. I took it all apart. You know, I just plastic-dipped it uh, and made sure that it had the proper cooling that runs into a wire splitter right here, which I attach two motors individually to that run into this thicker gauge here. So it's basically giving power to both motors at the same time. And on a 3-cell LiPo, I still get, like, 30 40 minutes of runtime. So, just to keep you guys who are wondering how I do that in the loop, four screws on the bottom. I'm basically releasing the transmission from the motor mount plate or from the transmission mounting plate. And I'm not going to be undoing the drive shafts because they are um, how they slide together, expandable. Look at that. It just lifts right out. Now people were wondering if it was DeWalt motors simply because I didn't have any, uh, any um, 
uh, stickers on here or decals. See, but the truth of the matter is, is that these motors are so old, the decals have just worn off. But you can see I cooked that one pretty darn good yesterday. So no problem. Now that we have this off, I'm just gonna be removing these bolts and of course taking off the pinion right here. Isn't that a beautiful powerhouse, hey? Looks solid, hey, especially with the drive shafts all steel. Yeah, they don't match uh, just because I had one wear out and I swapped it out, but not a big deal. Inside this aluminum housing, which doesn't give me any flex at all, all steel gears as well. Yeah. Totally locked up, but when I turn it, listen. Totally cooked the bearings in here. So we probably got some mud in here over time Just finally seized it up with all that power and when the comm isn't actually able to turn inside under the power of the uh, battery Look at that seized Rah, There that's when the power starts to build up and causes the heat and then you start getting the end of the motor in here starting to smoke look how filthy that is yeah, see, I could rebuild it, but they're just beyond the point of rebuilding when I abuse my truck for, you know, a year. So, I'm going to remove these. Going to need a bigger screwdriver for the bottom one. No big deal. One. And if I'm going to replace one, I may as well replace both uh, at the same time, just to prevent any future problems. And you'll notice that I actually have the pinions flipped around backwards, right? How many people notice that? The pinions are flipped around backwards just to fit properly with this kind of slipper clutch. Um, everything was fairly close and nice and flush to the motor mount plate. Uh, this is a level 3 RC motor mount plate that I got on eBay. Anybody can buy them if he's still doing it. Who knows? Things change over time. I want to be careful not to strip out that grub screw, of course, because once it's gone, <laughs> once you stripped out that pinion gear, it's useless. So here's one. You'll see this is exactly why I did these motors uh, with wires, just quick connects, because now I'm just going to unsolder these two points and re-solder them to the motor. Uh, people say solder, solder, it depends on where you are in the world, and people say shit differently. <laughs> yeah, this one's fit for the pit. Oh, toasty, look at that. Here, smell that. <laughs> I'm sure you guys can smell it right through your computer screen. Disgusting. That's okay. Man, this is why I four-wheel drive with little trucks in mud bogs more often than large trucks because swapping a motor is just this easy. <laughs> I've laid out a paper towel so we can use uh, some of CowRC's motor cleaner, uh, which is basically a motor cleaner and degreaser, but I'm actually going to use it on the transmission just because of how disgusting it is. This will help break up any of the uh, old dirt and disgusting stuff that's on there. Look at this cloth already. Look how much stuff came off of there. <laughs> That's why I use that product. Thank you, Heath. Heath is the gentleman that owns Cal RC or one of the owners there. They make some good products. Now, that's super smooth and super solid. Nice. There. Look how sharp those teeth are. So yes, they had a little bit too tight of a motor mesh uh, on this one, so that's okay. That's part of the reason right there that it could have been wearing out. Too tight of a mesh, things slide and slip over time. Uh, and basically it gets pushed right into the teeth of the, uh, the spur gear. Now the spur gear teeth look a little bit worn down, but they're not too bad. I'm just going to, when I get down to the hobby store, I'll order up uh, new 26 tooth pinions. That's right, 26 tooth. This is an 87 or an 89. I can't remember which one I ordered. So really, I get a lot of wheel speed out of the 35 turn, 
plus with the two motors I get quite a bit of torque which transfers through this whole steel transmission now that is pure power right so again people look at my truck they're like oh it's not that fast you know but really it's for pulling or being in the mud because I want the proper amount of wheel speed for the mud just to get the vehicle moving as well as the torque to turn the tires when they're caked thick with heavy mud uh, again just the 35 turns that I'm going to go with people ask me why I'm not using a brushless uh, motor right now and truth of the matter is, is yes you can run some brushless motors in water uh, and yes if you get mud inside brushed uh, motors it can actually seize it up uh, but if you rinse it out everything's usually okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lubricate the bearings front and back uh, before we do anything here I'm just going to use some regular um, uh, um, bearing oil uh, that's made for brushed motors uh, as well as I'm just going to re-solder it to get it on there and that'll basically be it simple job finding the flat spot on the motor shaft right here because that's where the pinion uh, set screw is going to have to go I'm going to run it backwards for the best mesh I can get right about there piece of full scap or loose leaf just kind of just kind of roll it in there then set your gap like I'm just pushing it down there one two roll it through and your gap is set very nice A lot of people ask me about this extreme drive shaft angle here. Does it actually bother me at all or does it cause any problems? And the answer is with this much power, and of course when I'm in a droop setting with my suspension, everything is actually not bad at all. I haven't run into any issues, even though it looks more extreme on camera, I suppose, but I don't have any hopping or shaking going on, so I'm not really concerned. Alright, so I did have to uh, switch these around off camera. The only reason being is, yeah, I had the right tabs, but I had the polarities reversed, which often happens when running dual motors. I'm not quite sure why. I haven't really investigated it enough, um, but I can tell you, yeah. <laughs> so this one plugs in here. I want them running the right direction. They're both running in the same direction. I want them to be running forward when I push forward uh, and at the right velocity. So here we go, radio on, steering working, new motors activated, that's at full droop, so yeah I get a little bit of a hop, that's from my drive shaft angle but not a big deal, because at normal, that's just the hop of the tires grabbing on, so there you go replaced dual motors piece of cake the beast is back in action that's how you guys can switch out your motors if you have a burnt motor heck just doing one if you have a single motor will be easy for you guys to do i know you've seen me do it a lot before if you need soldering soldering or whatever the heck you want to call it tips there's lots online i've done lots of soldering um online for you guys to see in previous videos so if you need help with that go ahead have a check back at that and uh there you go 
simple motor repair for the Beast 4x4. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. See you on the next RC Adventures.